What's up guys, my name is Boris, I'm a second year physician assistant student, and today I'm going to give you my three step process for studying anatomy. So why should you listen to me? Because I've always been terrible at anatomy. In fact, I've been terrible at biology most of my life. And that's because I'm just not one of those people who's really good at memorizing things. I'm not a national merit memorizer. So when I got really motivated to get into PA school, I knew that I had to figure out a way to drill this stuff into my head and do it fast. So here we go, my three-step process. Number one, make a handwritten list of all the body parts you gotta learn. Don't worry about what they look like or what they do, just focus on the words for now. Now rewrite this list at least five to ten times using a whiteboard. If you don't have a whiteboard, a piece of paper will do. And I know it's really boring, but I promise it's gonna pay off later. And now if you really want that A, that 4.0, then you should also test yourself by covering up part of each term and seeing how well you know it. Now I'm not telling you to try to be able to transcribe the whole list from memory, that's just a little too much, but the more comfortable you get with writing out these terms, the more that association is made, you know, from the brain to the hand, just being able to write all those terms, the easier you're gonna find step two to be, and the faster you're gonna learn. Okay, step two. So now that you're comfortable with all the terms, you know what they all look like and sound like, it's time to start associating the terms to the actual body part. So this is where you're going to use your textbook, your PowerPoint slides, or even Google to find good quality images of all the parts that you have to learn. Just keep in mind, if you're using Google, make sure that you use good, reputable sources like university websites, anatomy websites, you know, .orgs, .govs, .edus, things like that. Try to stay away from the .coms if possible. And honestly, for me, I tried to find both. I tried to find as many versions of each body part as I could. So I'd use the one from the textbook, you know, we use netters. I'd use the ones from the PowerPoints, which ended up also being netters. And then I'd try to find other pictures from the web. Sometimes they'd be cadaver pictures, sometimes they'd be like artist renditions. Either way, the more versions of something you can see, the better idea you're gonna have of what the part actually looks like. So just try to find like different versions, different angles, different ways of seeing the same body part and then increase your understanding that way. Your professor might provide these kinds of diagrams that I'm showing you right here on the screen. I call them blank out diagrams. Basically, it's a picture of the stuff that you gotta learn with the terms actually blanked out so you can fill them in yourself. So your professor might provide those. If they don't, it's a good idea to make them yourself because they're very effective in helping you learn. And you can just make your own using Paint for Windows or Preview for Mac. Now another part of step two here is if your list of terms is not already organized for you in a way that makes sense, here's where you should reorganize that list and kind of learn it in order if that makes sense. So that way parts that are near each other are also grouped each other on your list so you're memorizing them together. So for example, if you're studying the muscles of the upper extremity and you're looking at your list and like the extensor digiti minimi is nowhere near the extensor digitorum on your list and instead it's like grouped with a brachioradialis or something you got to reorganize your list so that it makes sense you know you want to memorize all the terms that are near each other so that when you're looking at the body part you can just see all those things together and so you should just take a few minutes to reorganize your list in a way that makes sense to you so now that you got your diagrams you got your list it's time to study I personally don't like to study more than maybe five terms at a time because it's so easy to get frustrated with anatomy and to feel like you're not learning anything. But who knows, you might be comfortable studying more than five at a time, completely up to you. For me personally, I do five. And by study, I just mean look at your diagrams and try to fill them in. If you don't know something, look it up, then switch to another diagram, try to quiz yourself again, and just go through everything. And I know the first few times are gonna be painful. You're gonna feel like you don't know anything. And that's okay. That's the process. This is literally the process of learning this stuff. You just go diagram by diagram, term by term, look everything up that you don't know, and eventually, after a few repetitions, five, ten repetitions, whatever it takes, you're gonna know them all, and you're gonna feel like a boss. And just one thing to keep in mind when you get frustrated, this step, step two, does take the longest. Especially if you have to make your own diagrams, that really does take a long time. So just take your time, be nice to yourself, and just keep grinding. Okay, step three. Now that you've become comfortable with the terms in step one, and you've made high quality associations between the terms and the body parts and what they look like in step two, it's finally time to go to the lab and put it all together. And just like in step two, we're gonna do a few terms at a time, five, maybe 10 at the most, until you've got them down, and then you move on to the next set of five to 10 terms. And I'm also assuming that in step two, you took the time to arrange your list in a sensible order, 
so the terms you're learning should all be close to each other. So you should be making associations not just from the term to the body part, but also between all the body parts that are close to each other on the body. And all together, it just makes it easier to learn everything. So once you've gone through your whole list a few times, enough times to be fairly comfortable with the entire list, you can locate basically any part, you have a pretty good understanding of where every body part is from looking at your list, it's time to mix it up. You're gonna rearrange your list completely randomly so that now, none of the parts that are close to each other on the body are actually near each other on your list. Your list is completely randomized. And now you're just gonna do it all over again. You're gonna study those five to 10 terms at a time until you're comfortable. And with this, if I haven't already explained it, what I mean by study from your list is you're just gonna quiz yourself and maybe your lab partners. You're gonna look at your list, pick out a term, and find it on the body, on the cadaver or on the animal or whatever it is you're using depending on what kind of anatomy class this is. So anyway, just go through your new list, completely randomized, and just be more comfortable jumping around from area to area because that's how your practical exam is gonna be organized. It's not gonna be like, okay, station one is the entire hand and station two is the entire foot. Like, no way, station one is gonna have something from the hand, something from the foot, something from the back. However your professors organize it, it's just gonna be random. So that's what this step is really getting you ready for. And another thing here for step three, if your lab has more than one body, let's say you have three, four, five, six cadavers in the lab, and they're all gonna be used for testing, you're gonna to wanna to find every single term on your list in every single body. I know that's time consuming, I know that's tedious, but the truth of the matter is every body is fair game for the practical exam, and body parts can look totally different in different bodies. Especially things like nerves and blood vessels can look totally, totally different, different sizes, textures, thicknesses, even like branching patterns can be pretty variable from body to body, so you really wanna make sure you find everything in every single body. Ask your professor for help because honestly it can get pretty confusing. But the goal here is to have a very diverse knowledge of all the body parts, how they present in different bodies. All right, so let's recap. In step one, we got very comfortable with the terms. Writing them, sounding them out, what they look like on paper, we just got comfortable with the terms. In step two, we made very high quality associations between the terms and what the body part actually looks like. And then in step three, we actually went to the lab and we got really comfortable with what all these body parts actually look like in every body that we might be tested on. And just remember that for people like us who are not national merit memorizers, maybe English is your second language like it is for me, learning anatomy is hard, but it can be done with enough patience and hard work. So go get your laptop, go get your list of terms and your anatomy book, and go get that 4.0.